The microphone. And what do you think? Should we go and see a movie? <sighs> Moo? <sighs> Fee! <sighs> hey, you didn't type everything that I said. You should listen more carefully. And you should try using less words. <gasps> Nolik, hey. Alia? What are you arguing about? Uh, well, I was writing a letter to Johnny. I was, not you. I messed up my finger and Nolik offered to help me. I had no idea that you're such a yapper. Oh. Now I see. Tom Thomas. <laughs> Didn't you know that you can call Johnny straight from your computer? You sure? You see that picture of the phone? Just click on it. Hi. So what movie do you want to go see? Hey there. I don't care. Just not pirates and those robots. Hey, Tom Thomas, why aren't you answering me? I am answering you. Hello? Hello? Talking to the microphone. Uh, I don't have a microphone. There you go. End of conversation. All right, then talk right into there. Simka, come on. You use headphones to listen. It's a joke. It's no joke. We talk into microphones and listen through headphones. But both of these devices use a special membrane to do their job. The membrane inside of a microphone is used to capture sound that is then sent through wires as an electrical signal. And inside a pair of headphones, a membrane helps turn that electrical signal back into sound. So it turns out that a microphone and headphones are built in a very similar way, even though they are used quite differently. And so I talk right into here? Johnny, hello? Just wait a second. First, we need to plug your headphones into the hole where the microphone gets plugged in. Ah, I get it. Go ahead. Now it's a microphone. Johnny, I'm here. Can you hear? Yeah, he can hear, but you can't. Nolik, switch it over to the headphone jack. I already saw a robot. And I already saw it. No, Lick! I don't think there's anyone who didn't see it. You didn't see it? Then let's go see it. No, I don't wanna. I think the robots will be even more boring than the pirates. Do you wanna see the pirates? Make up your mind. Do you want to see the pirates or the robots? I don't want to see either one. Nolik, what are you doing? What am I doing? It's because you and Johnny don't listen to each other. I've got a good idea. You need to talk like police on their walkie-talkies. When they're done talking and they're ready for an answer, they say, over. Great idea. When we talk to someone using the telephone, there are two channels for the sound. We talk through the first channel and listen to the other person talking through the second one. But sometimes two people need to talk to each other using only one channel. For instance, sailors and taxi drivers use one channel radio sets. When a radio set's turned on, you can hear the other person talking, but they can't hear you talk unless you push a special button down. Then they'll hear you, but you won't hear them. So that means you have to take turns talking, because if everybody tries talking at once, nobody will understand anything. So then, to let people know that you're done talking and you're ready to listen to what they have to say, say over. Johnny, hello. Why don't we try talking like police on their walkie-talkies? Whenever you're done talking, say to me, over, over. All right, so are we going to the movies? Over. Nah, I don't feel like it. Why don't we go play ball instead? Over. Sounds good. Who were you talking to before? Over. Uh, uh, I can't tell you that. It's classified. And we policemen, we follow the rules. Wow, that worked out great. You two are the best. Over. Oops. 
<laughs> we try our best. Over. We do. Especially me. <sighs> I'm completely over. Paper. Hey, Tom Thomas! You're watering plants? Not only. I'm writing an essay for school. I don't get it. I have to write an essay that's called How I Take Care of Nature. Only I have to write what's true, so I'm writing what's true. Watering my plants. <laughs> oh! Chusaka! Chusaka! Come here, girl! Stop! Don't be scared! Why did you pick her up? I want to pet her a little so I can write about how well I take care of animals. Tom Thomas, I want to take care of nature too! That sounds good. And what should we be doing? We could try saving air by not breathing as often. Awesome idea! Way to go! Saving air! Let's go for it! And ready? <gasps> Humans invade nature and destroy more and more of her riches with each passing year. They extract her minerals and oil, cut down her trees, and pollute her air and water. They do all of this to produce food and all sorts of other things. It's a shame that people don't really need all these things that they produce. They often buy something and then just toss it away when it's still almost new. And then there's all the food that humans buy and just throw away. So if you want to help nature, try not to buy anything that you really don't need. And take good care of the things that you do buy. And you can be sure that we Fixies will do everything we can to make your things last as long as possible. <sighs> That's it. Now we can write it. Uh-huh. Write this. I also do my duty by saving air. A whole 20 seconds worth. You got it? What's that noise? Huh. I must have left it running when I needed some water for my plants. Tom Thomas, I think you should write that you're saving water, too. It really matters, because there's not enough of it. Nolik, that's a good idea. Let's add that. Hi there. What are you guys up to? We're writing about how Tom Thomas protects nature. It's a homework assignment for school. Uh-huh. I've already written how I'm watering the plants, I'm good to living creatures, how I'm saving air and water, and how I'm conserving carrots, too. I never want to eat them, especially in soup. Not eating your vegetables? No way. Doesn't count. You sure of that? Mm-hmm. Why did you rip your paper out? You won't let me say how I'm conserving carrots, right? So I'll have to rewrite it. Ah, uh, you're not taking care of nature. What? Where'd you get that idea from? That's all I'm doing. No. When you keep on throwing your paper out, it means you're not taking care of trees out there. What trees are you talking about? Didn't you know humans make paper out of trees? <laughs> humans make paper by cutting down trees and shredding the pieces into chips. The chips are then placed in water, chemicals are added to the solution, and then it is all mixed together into a mushy, watery substance called pulp. Next, the water is drained from the pulp and, with the help of huge rotating drums, is flattened into thin sheets of paper. So you see, to make new paper, humans have to keep cutting down trees. And you should know this. If every person on the planet would use one less sheet of paper, you know, they'd save a million trees all 
together. You sure? I'm sure. And now that you know about trees and paper, what are you gonna do next? Hey, you know, I've decided not to write any essay for school. You, you what? I want to help save more trees by using less paper. That's all. Oh, Tom Thomas, you're my hero. Ah. The magnifying glass. Case number one. Let's begin. Well, well. I see evidence of the criminal. The criminal's fingerprints, to be exact. He won't get away with it. Why do you think she's just looking at us instead of chasing us? Oh, maybe she can't see us and we're invisible. Then how come I see you? Simka, no look. Be careful. Don't destroy the tracks. What kind of tracks? Whose tracks are they? Solve a crime. A crime? What kind? Someone stole a wing from this plane, but I'm on the trail. Take a look at that fingerprint. I'm looking. Well, and so? Each fingerprint is unique, so if you can find fingerprints, that means you have a good chance to find out who left them. Class! It's been known for quite a long time that all humans have their own unique fingerprints. It's true! No two people have the exact same fingerprints, and this fact helps the police catch criminals. It starts by finding fingerprints at the scene of the crime. Then the police compare those fingerprints with the fingerprints of someone who may have committed the crime. If they match, they found the criminal. This method is called dataloscopy. Besides catching criminals, fingerprints can also be used to replace ordinary keys. When you press your finger against a special electronic lock, the lock recognizes your fingerprint, and then it's, please come on in. By the way, unlike humans, we fixies don't leave fingerprints anywhere. And that's why even the police can't find us. Now we'll put a dog on the scent of the criminal. Chusaka, sniff. Pick of the trail. Now go find. Hey, what's wrong? Chusaka's broken. We've got to fix her then. How? She's not a vacuum cleaner. She's a real live dog. Fixies know how to fix it all. Not true. Almost all. The first thing we have to do is a thorough inspection. Let's see now. Her eyes are looking quite healthy. Good. Tails in one piece. Ears are clean? Yeah. Tongue, rosy pink. Tom Thomas, stand her up on all four feet. No, paws, I mean. Uh-huh. Chusaka. <laughs> Go on, you're fine. Now I understand. Here's what's out of order. It's her right paw. But I can't see what's wrong. I wonder if something's broken on the inside. Wait. Maybe something really small is stuck in her paw there. Tom Thomas, we need your lens. Here. In order to examine a small object, you need a lens. A magnifying lens is a special piece of glass that is thicker in the middle than on the sides. It bends the light that passes through it. And that is why, if you put this kind of lens between your eyes and something small, it looks like the thing got bigger. If you put two lenses in a frame, you get a pair of glasses. And if you add a handle to the lens, you get a magnifying glass. There it is. A splinter. It's glass, I think. Looks like it. Uh, you're right. It's possible it's from the lamp in the hallway. It broke yesterday, and I guess not every little piece got swept up. Chusaka, hey there! You're all better now. Looks like we fixed her. Tadish, she's all repaired and working. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have cured ungrateful dog. Ah! Simka, no look, here it is. The wing that was lost. Yeah, that's great, only you still have to figure out who hid it underneath the bed there. Yeah, you still need to match the fingerprints. 
The fingerprints on the wing are the same as on the plane. But whose are they? And did you check your fingerprints out? Huh. All the fingerprints are mine. So I guess it was really my own fault. I just lost it somehow. <laughs> so it turns out that you were the criminal? Hooray! The crime's been solved! <laughs> and you, Tom Thomas, are the criminal! <laughs> the balloon. No way! You'll miss for sure. No problem. Huh. Anybody can do that. But I bet you can't do it if you tried bouncing the ball off the floor first. Just look. Oh, what are my parents gonna do to me? Maybe we should call Simka. Simka! And what's Simka gonna do to us when she sees this? So, got yourself in trouble, huh? You shouldn't be playing with a ball inside. And now we have your lamp to fix. But how? Only my dad can reach all the way up there. Why just your dad? You have a hot air balloon over there. That doesn't fly. It's just a toy, see? Well, it might be just a toy to you. But for us fixies, it's absolutely real. If an object is lighter than water, it floats up to the surface. And in the same way, if something is lighter than air, it floats upward. Did you know that hot air is lighter than cold air? Well, it is. And that means if you warm up the air in a balloon, it will float up. Hot air balloons use special gas burners to heat up the air inside of them so they will get lighter. And the bigger the balloon, the more people it can take up into the air. I know what you're saying, but where do we get a burner? You think fixies don't have their own burners? Huh. Sure we've got them. Bring it down here, and I'll go talk to our parents. No, no, and no. The human child must never see us. Listen now, Simka. We already don't approve of him seeing you and Nolik. He won't look. Papas, please. You're the one who told us how you dreamed of flying since you trained to go into space. Yeah. For two years I waited on standby, but I never went up. And you've never flown in a hot air balloon either, honey. So let's call it a deal. I talked them into it. There's just one condition. You can't watch. Okay. You can come in now. Now prepare the burner. Coming right up. <gasps> Permission for takeoff? Permission is granted. And off we go! Hooray! It's flying! Don't you peek! Turn around! Oh, it was an accident. I'm going to evaluate the damage. Maintaining proper altitude! Spot. Air balloons are really awesome. I wonder, who figured out how to do that? It was the Montgolfiers. The hot air balloon was invented in the 18th century by the Montgolfier brothers from France. In those days, there were no gas burners, so they heated the air inside the balloon by burning straw. At first, there were no passengers on their balloon. Not counting the fixies, of course. I mean, how else could a balloon get up in the air without them? Unfortunately, the names of the first fixies who took that flight were not recorded in the annals of history. Following the fixies' flight, the next passengers were animals. A ram, a rooster, and a duck. And it was not until those three safely landed after flying a full four kilometers that humans dared to fly in hot air balloons themselves. Ever since their invention, hot air balloons have also gone by another name, Montgolfiers! Hooray! Tidish! Tidish! All right, Simka.
Olga, please let your parents know that I'm so very thankful. Okay, by the way, now you can turn around. You know, Simka, let's fly the balloon just like them. There's no way, Nolik, we would need to use the burner, and kids aren't allowed to play with fire. I'll give you a ride. Look, I still need to put it back up on the shelf, so climb in and let's do it. The refrigerator. Good job. My homework is all done. Piece of gum. It's my bubble gum. Oh, thanks a lot, Tom Thomas. Now, what's the plan to get me unstuck from here? Here's what we do. It's got to be frozen. Once I sat on gum too, and my mom put my pants in the freezer. The gum froze up, and it came right off. I don't want to go into the freezer. Don't worry, Nolik. I'll stay right here with you. Just hold on. It won't take long at all. Huh? Why do I need to hold on? The gum's already holding on to me. Simka, do you know why it's so cold in the freezer when outside it's warm? I'll explain it to you. A refrigerator has a pump that pushes a special liquid through a long tube. Inside the refrigerator, the liquid in the tube wants to turn into a gas. To do that, it takes the heat from everything inside, and that makes the refrigerator cool. Then the pump sucks in the gas and pushes it out as a hot liquid into the tubes on the back of the refrigerator. That lets all of the heat collected from the inside escape into the air outside. Uh, I wish I was somewhere warm. Hold on. I'll go get us some warm clothes to wear. I don't want to hold on. I want to go with you. Just hang in there. I'm hanging. Tom Thomas, open up! Masia, do we have any warm clothing to wear? Why in the world do you need it? I just do. Well, I need to know what is happening. <laughs> Hooray! Tom Thomas! Freeze up in here for good. A Fixie is constantly surrounded by all sorts of danger. Inside a dark freezer, a Fixie can lose his way and freeze to death. If he's not paying attention, he can drown inside of a washing machine or inside of a dishwasher. And a careless Fixie is always at risk of getting an electric shock. Or suppose there's a short circuit inside of an appliance that starts a fire. If this happens, you need to run away if you want to survive. And what about humans? Well, they don't even believe that we Fixies exist at all. So they can accidentally drop something on top of a Fixie, or step on one, or kick us across the room. So if we don't get out of the way in time, ah! Oh! So what I'm saying, Fixies, you need to be careful out there and pay attention. So be smart and stay safe, fellow Fixies. I don't understand this at all. He was right here. 
Poor Nolik. I wonder where he went. Look at this! Footprints! Nolik! You're alive! You scared me half to death! How did you get out of there? Well, you told me about how a refrigerator works. And so I found that cold tube and started crawling on it until it got hot, and then I was here. Hey, there's smoke coming out of you. We need to cool you down right away. Huh? Where? <laughs> ah! I don't want to go into the refrigerator. Stop! I was joking. <laughs> Look how it froze. I could break my teeth on it. You aren't going to chew it anymore. I'd never do that. Not after Nolik sat on it. Well, you didn't need to stick it where it doesn't belong. Hey, I apologize. I'll go and throw it away. Maybe you'll try the trash can? The Combination Lock. Are you here? Stop your hiding. I'll still find you. Nolik, is that you? Hey, come on, that's not fair. You saw. Let me go again. I don't want to. You want me to play hide and seek when I got a brand new game to play with? Where is it? I don't see it anywhere in the room. I took it to school with me. For what reason? To show it off. Awesome game! Tom Thomas! Can I play your game? Uh-uh, because I'm not done playing with it yet. Now just try asking me to do some favor for you. Hmm, wait, was it a three or a four? Hmm, it could have been five. I forgot. What about? I forgot the combination. And now I can't even do my homework. Everything I need to finish is inside of there. I'm not climbing in to find out your homework. Don't even ask me. Tom Thomas, why do you look so upset? <sighs> the code for the lock. I don't remember it. Don't you worry. Ha! We'll open it. I know all about a code lock. A simple code lock is built with a few disks that have numbers on them. In the center of each disk is a hole with a notch. When all of the discs are turned so their notches line up in a straight row, the lock's pin can slide out freely. And to get the notches to line up, just turn the discs to the lock's code and the lock will open. It's that simple. It looks like we gotta take a look inside the lock. Ah, I see. No look. Where are you? There's work to do. I won't do it. I'm not going to help such a greedy boy. Nolik, won't you help me out here? And I won't be so greedy anymore. All right. You broke me down. <laughs> Only as soon as we're done, you're going to let me play with the game. Right. <laughs> There's no room in here. Hang in there. We'll start turning the discs one at a time, and you yell stop when they're lined up. Stop! Turn the next one now! Stop! Stop! Now try! Yes! Addy, you! Tideesh! Hooray! And your code was really simple. Way too simple. The secret numbers and letters that you use to lock something up are called the code or the password. And to make sure your password's a really good one, here are some things you should know. Never choose a password that's really simple for someone else to guess. Like one with numbers or letters that are all the same or are all in order. It's also a bad idea to make a password out of your birth date or name. It's better to think of a password that's a bit more complicated. And don't forget your password once you come up with it. Write down your password on a piece of paper and keep it in a safe place, but don't show it to anybody else. And then, if you happen to forget your code or password, you'll be able to remember it with the help of that piece of paper. And why did 
did you ever put a lock on your backpack? I was hiding the game from the other kids. Then why did you take it to school today? I wanted to show it off to my class. And did you show it? No way. If they would have seen it, they'd be like, I want to use it. I want to play. And so you hid it and didn't show it to anybody? Not to anyone. Then why take it to school, silly? To show it off there. You're just some show-off. You're just some greedy... Oops, sorry. Once greedy boy. Will you let us play now? <sighs> play away. We're not bothering you, are we? Can you jump a little easier? You're shaking the whole desk. The DVD. Chusaka! Get away from here! So where did it go? Oh, here it is. Hey there, Tom Thomas. So what's on the disc? Hi there, Nolik. Hi there, Simka. It's a cartoon about Gulliver in the land of Lilypoon. My friend Jeannie let me borrow it. I have it till tomorrow. And what's the story about? Well, it's about this guy who gets shipwrecked where people are just so teeny, teeny, tiny. Fixies, you mean? No, not fixies. Lilliputians. Lilliputians? Uh-huh. Know what, Simka? I think that you fixies might have come from those Lilliputians. No way! Our grandpa told us a completely different story of the fixies. When something is very well made, then the saying goes that it was made with just a little bit of salt. In old times, craftsmen made things to last. And in each appliance, they would leave just a little piece of their soul. Those little pieces of their soul would turn into tiny craftsmen called fixies, who would then make the appliance their home and take care of it every day. And that's how the very first fixies came about. But as the years have passed, fewer things are being made by hand, and more and more things are getting made by machines in factories. That means there are less and less new fixies coming from human souls. Luckily, fixies can fall in love with each other and have their own family, raising their children and teaching them well, so they'll grow up to become skillful and honest master fixie repairmen. So you're mistaken. We're not Lilliputians at all. We're fixies. Yeah, fixies. Listen, Tom Thomas, why don't you show us the movie? Yeah, yeah, I want to learn about Lilliputians, too. Really, I do. Sure, I'll show you. Oh, no. What's going on? I broke it. Uh, I can't give her back a disc that's messed up. Don't panic. We'll take a look at it. Come lay it down over here. Tom Thomas, why is this disc all covered in jelly? Because I was touching it with my fingers. I mean, uh, what else? It's obvious you don't know how a disc works at all. And you know how it works? Yeah, I know. Yeah? If we take a look at a digital disc through a powerful microscope, we can see rows of tiny valleys of different lengths. These valleys are actually a code for the cartoons, games, or music recorded onto the disc. Inside a disc player, a laser beam reads the code and helps turn it back into pictures and sounds. But if you scratch the disc or smudge the disc with dirty fingers, the laser can't read it and the disc won't play. That's why you need to keep discs clean and stored in cases. So that's why you should only hold discs along the edges. And when you're done watching them, you have to put them back inside their boxes. And what about this one? Do we have to get rid of it? Not so fast. Nolik, this calls for a major cleaning. Let's get the brooms. Thomas, check the disc. 
you go. Now you're holding it right. Hooray! The disc works fine. Hooray! Now we can watch the movie about the Lilliputians. Hey, Gulliver, why are you sitting there? You've seen this movie already. I'm knowing what. What, what? Look at that pile of discs. Where do you need to put them? Huh. In their boxes. Whipped cream. <laughs> Nolik, please stop your jumping. Your head's gonna fall off. Don't worry, it won't fall off. Mm-hmm, that sounds good. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Are you going somewhere, Tom Thomas? Me? Nowhere. Katya's coming over, so we can do our homework. I need some strawberries. Is she gonna bring the strawberries with her? You got it. And my job's to supply the whipped cream. They're so good together. Whipped cream? Do you have any? I'll go and check. Wait for me! <sighs> Suka, what do they make cream from? It's made from milk, and the milk you can get from a cow. And what about whipped cream? The cow jumps up and down like you, so the cream can get whipped up. Really? I'm joking, Nolik. I looked everywhere. We've got regular cream, but there isn't whipped cream. No problem. We can whip some up right now. Cream is thick milk with a lot of fat. If you want to make whipped cream, you need to cool down the cream, add some sugar, and then beat this mixture very well. This adds tiny air bubbles that turn the cream into a delicious white fluffy foam. But it's important not to overdo it. Or instead of getting fluffy, the cream will start getting thicker and thicker until it turns into rich, creamy butter. How are we gonna whip it up? Look, there's a whisk. No! Hold on! How's that? It's not working. Maybe we need to use a different bowl or something. Do you think that a bottle would work? Hmm, that's a really good idea. Now I don't have to worry about spilling this cream anymore. Shake it with both hands. Come on! 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 Shake it harder, Tom Thomas! That's all. I'm just too tired. The cream looks exactly the same as when you started. You didn't try hard enough. Oh, really? Then try whipping it yourself. I got it! That's who's gonna help us! Chusaka? Yeah! Awesome! Bring it down! A little more! Perfect! Open it up! Chusaka, Chusaka! Bring the rocks! Telephone! Trampoline! <laughs> yeah? But why can't you? What a shame. It's fine. Come on over anyway. Oh, you can't reach us. You can't reach us. Oh. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm sure that at least we got the cream whipped up. Oh, see that, Zuka? There's no cream left. Just some yellow stuff. It's butter, I'm sure. We overdid it. People make so many different things out of milk, like cream or butter or frosting for cakes and cupcakes. With dry milk, sugar, and boiling water, you can make condensed milk. And if you make it cold, brr, you get ice cream. And if the milk gets sour, no problem. Humans make all sorts of foods out of sour milk, like yogurt, sour cream, kefir, and buttermilk. 
If you drain off the extra liquid from sour milk, you'll have cottage cheese. And by boiling milk a special way, you can make all sorts of different cheeses. There are so many kinds of cheeses made throughout the world that it's hard to even count them all. And even certain kinds of chocolate can't be made without milk. You must agree that plain old ordinary milk is just one super magical, extraordinary thing. It's just awful, guys. What, Katya's not coming over? She's coming over, just without the strawberries. She didn't know that her grandmother had already used up all of them to make some jam. So you're telling us that we don't need any whipped cream? Right, Katya's bringing a cake. And she said that we'll need butter. She wants to make frosting out of it. Butter? I don't know if we have any. We got plenty. The spare part. Hey, what's going on? It was just working. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Simka Nolik. Look, I've got a Sorry, problem. Sorry, no time to play. We're busy. Busy? With what? We got put in charge here for the day. We even get to use one of the Pacamats. Papus and Masia went out to visit our Fixie friends. Papus used to be with them at the Space Center years ago. Ever since he was a boy, Papus dreamed of going into space. Then why not? Fixies work on rockets, too. He even got a job at the Astronaut Training Center. He was put in charge of the centrifuge, and he made sure it worked perfectly. The centrifuge is a sort of very fast carousel for training astronauts. And Papus trained inside of it, too. Unfortunately, Papus never knew the rocket was scheduled to fly on his day off. And when he found out, it was too late, and the rocket blasted off without him. Since then, Papus hates his days off, but he still longs to fix something like that centrifuge. You know, something turning around like a washing machine. Too bad for Papus that the one in his house seems to keep working perfectly fine. So that means today you fix everything? Uh-huh. Well then, it's your lucky day, because my car just broke down. Hooray! We've got work to do. Nolik, let's go! Well, what broke down here? Wait a sec. Here, this part broke out. It's all covered in black. I wonder where we can get the same part, but a clean one. A clean one? Hmm. <gasps> Nolik! Genius! There's the same exact part inside the dishwasher. We can take it from there. Come on! Do you have any idea how all these parts are connected to one another? With this thing right under you. It's a special part called a circuit board. A circuit board's made like this. First, the board gets covered with a thin layer of metal. Then, paths are laid onto the board where the electricity is going to flow. After that, all of the extra metal is washed off of it with a special cleaning liquid, leaving the metal paths that were drawn on the board. These paths work just like wires to connect the parts on the board to each other. And then all that's left to do is attach those parts to their places on the paths. Pull it! Uh, uh, Tadish! Tom Thomas! Tadish! Hooray! It works again! Tom Thomas, I'm about to start the dishwasher. Are there any dirty dishes in your room? Nah. Slow down! Slow what down? Slow down your mom. We took the new part out of the dishwasher, see? Mom, wait, don't start it. You need to put, put, yeah, put in this one uh, dirty cup. No, look, follow me. Inside the TV's the same part. Now back to the dishwasher. <sighs> We barely made it. We grabbed the part from the TV in the living room. Not the TV. Uh, my mom's favorite program is about to start. <gasps> ah! <sighs> the television is working now. 
And where'd you get the part for it? From your dad's computer in his office. Hi, everybody. I'm home. Hi, hon. Are you ready for dinner? In a bit. I've got to finish a little work on the computer. Simka, hurry. Where else can we find that part? Stop. That's enough running. Here, take it back from the car. And then, we put the part back into the computer and it started working again. Oh, that was really silly. Remember, you little experts, never repair any device at the cost of another one. I understand now. And I understand. If you were smart, you could have taken the part out of the old radio in the closet. Papus, but you know the radio wouldn't work then. That old thing hasn't been working for years. Masia and I have pulled out half of those parts already. The keyboard. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready, Ready or not, not, here we come. And where is he hiding this time? Tom Thomas! Yoo-hoo! Tom Thomas? You didn't forget about your grandma's birthday, did you? No! Oops, I did. We found you this time. Hey, that's not fair. It was my mom that found me, not you. Then go and hide again. Not now. I have to draw a birthday card for... Oh! My grandmother. So, we need one clean sheet of paper. When's your grandma's birthday? Tomorrow. But your card won't get there on time. Oh, then what can I do? Come on and use your noggin. Pick up the phone, give her a ring. Your grandmother will be really happy to hear your voice. No, we've got a tradition. We send each other birthday cards. And what's the internet for? Why don't you send off an electronic card to her? Simka, that's genius. Oh, this one's cool. Now go ahead and type your message. The letter D isn't working. How can I write Dear Grandma without D? Just let her be a plain old grandma without the dear. But the letter G isn't working either. It looks like we could use a pack -a mat here. A pack -a mat What for? To clean off the keyboard's contacts that got all dirty. What contacts? A key on a computer keyboard works pretty much the same way as a doorbell does. When we press on the button of a doorbell, the contacts inside touch, which lets the electricity flow that makes the bells ring. And when we press a letter on a computer keyboard, an electrical current runs from the keyboard to the computer, and that letter appears on the screen. But if there's dirt between the contacts that stops them from touching, then the current can't flow. Drinking. And so, you shared it with the keyboard? Here's the reason why it's not working. Where did so many crumbs come from? Uh, they fell off my sandwich. That must be the sauce for my mushroom pizza. Oh, no, Lick. Well, now it looks like we're going to be out picking mushrooms. The Fixies are always ready to help people out. But there are some people we really don't feel like helping. I remember when I was working as a Fixie back in one house. It was a disaster. One day, the owner spilled coffee on the remote for the TV. As I was running to clean the remote, he starts pounding the TV with his fist because the channels won't change. So now the TV is broken, too. Well, with no TV, he decides to listen to some music, and he carelessly pulls the music center onto the floor. So he tries to fix that himself and manages to break it for good. And then he sits down on top of his telephone and breaks that to bits. 
Meanwhile, I'm still busy trying to clean the coffee off of the remote. There wasn't a minute of rest with this guy around. In the end, I couldn't take it any longer. So I got out of there. And now I'm here, teaching kids. Tom Thomas, why are you eating food at your computer? Yeah, they don't feed you in the kitchen or something? <sighs> now I know it. It's not allowed. You said it. Now write your message. And write the address on there, too. Uh-huh. Mom, do you know what the email address for Grandma is? Grandma doesn't have an email address. So what? We went ahead and fixed that keyboard for nothing? I still need it. And my Grandma? I'll give her a ring on the phone. You said you had a tradition of writing each other cards. And what? Grandma will be happy to hear my voice. That's some original idea, huh? <laughs> the Drain. Hey, Nolik, come help me. The fan in the computer needs dusting. Not right now. Me and Tom Thomas are painting a card for his parents' anniversary. Oh, look, poor you. You must be so tired. Hi, Simka. It's really great you're here. I have a question. Twelfth anniversary, is it spelled with an F or is it with a V? Uh, you know what? First put down the number 12 and then put a dash on there and then a TH. Oh, right. But first I'll change the water. I'll be right back. Oh, Mama left her ring here. Whoa! Uh, no, uh, uh, no! Oh no, what have I done? Uh, I spoiled my mom and dad's uh, special day. Where? In the bathroom? My mom's ring was lying there, and, and I dropped it into the sink, and now it's washed away. Uh, there goes the day. It didn't wash anywhere. Don't you know anything about how a drain trap works? About a what? A drain traps a special curved pipe under the sink basin. Water flows out of the faucet and flows down into the drain trap. And after that, it goes down to the sewer. But when you turn off the water, not all of it washes away. Some of it stays down in the drain trap. It's made that way so the smell from the sewer won't get back into the house. A ring is much heavier than water, so if you happen to drop it down the drain, it won't wash away. It will stay at the bottom of the drain trap. Well, that means we still got a chance. Yeah, but how in the world can we get it out of that trap? Who knows? I don't know how to swim. Don't worry. It's all under control. Do you have any thread? Plenty of it. Go get it, and I'll be back in a flash. Hmm. I can't fix it like this. I need my welder. Papoose! I need to borrow your pack of mat for a little while. Now that's a coincidence. I need to use it too. Masia, then I need to use your pack of mat. What? I'll bring it right back. Hey, where are you going? Just watch what you're doing, dear. Just like the name says, fixies live to help machines and appliances. But machines are very big and fixies are very small, so they can't get by without tools. Long ago, fixies worked with just about anything they could find. Little feathers, threads, pins, but now they have backpacks called Hackamats. Inside of Hackamat are all sorts of tools. Just push the button and the Hackamat spins around quickly shooting out a hook or a magnet or even a parachute. Every adult fixie has their own Hackamat. But before children can get them, they have to go to school and study hard and then pass an exam before they have the rights of a full-fledged fixie. And it's only after all of that that young fixies get their own pack of mats. And what? You're going down there with just that on? Not just like this. <laughs> yeah, like that. Huh? She was just saying, when I tug on the thread, you need to pull me up. I got it. He just said, I got it. I don't need to repeat what he said. She said, she doesn't need me to repeat what you say.
Luca, Nolik, thank you. You really saved the day. That's what fixies are for. I said that's what fixies are for. Tom Thomas, who are you talking with in there? Oh, your mom came back. No one. Hey, can you turn back into fixies? I gotta ask you a question. I forgot, should I write 12th anniversary with an F or do I write with a V? Just write the number! You're right! The remote. Hey Simka, the button got stuck on the remote. How can we get it back out of there? Look and learn, Nolik. Please help! Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh, oh, oh! Should I let it go now? Oh. Oops! <laughs> no, like, hide somewhere. She stole the remote. Nolik? Where are you hiding? Nolik? Hello there, Fixies. Hey, where are you? Hey, Tom Thomas, you got here just in time. Chusaka ran off with the TV remote. And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing. I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Chusaka took it. Oh, no, no, it's in big-time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm gonna go look in the other rooms. Simka, Tom Thomas, here I am. I'm over here. For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka. I ran to get a pack a mat. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great. But what is it? I'll explain it to you. Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack -a mat I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. Nolik! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote. A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second. Chusaka Chusaka with a brain full of rush. Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough? All right, then. out for the remote's rays. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see him. What are you saying? You can! If you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. 
It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light-emitting diode turns itself on. So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. So, you done watching? Time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> the electric kettle. No, your chin was below the bar. Ooh, that's all. I can't do anymore. You weakling. You're the weakling. I'm not. I just haven't eaten in a while, and that's why I lost my strength. You're a slave to food, Tom. And you see, that's the difference between us fixies and you humans. Many people wrongly assume that the only way Fixies could live is by stealing food off of humans' tables. Or worse yet, by stealing it from their refrigerators. That's just a lie. It's not true at all. Fixies don't eat any kind of human food. So then where in the world do the Fixies get their energy, you're wondering? It's very simple. A Fixie's entire life is connected with devices. Fixies not only live inside of devices, but they take care of them and help them live longer. And in return for their help, these devices share part of their energy with the Fixies. So there you go. The Fixies help devices, and devices help the Fixies. Yes, we Fixies and machines have a symbiotic relationship. So we don't eat leftovers like cockroaches, because we're Fixies. One, two, three, whoa! How's it possible that a big boy like you doesn't know how to make any food for himself? I'm able to cook, but I'm not allowed to turn on the stove. What can you make without it? Oh, yes. We have instant oatmeal. Look. Do you like oatmeal? You're joking. Only my folks say oats are healthy and make you stronger. Great. Well, then how do you cook it? It's not hard. All you gotta do is add hot water. And I'm allowed to turn on the kettle. Stop and check if there's water in there. If there's none, you can burn out the kettle. It's got enough. Then you can turn it on. Hey, tell me, how does the kettle turn off? I mean, how does it know when the water's hot enough? Inside of an electric kettle, there's a heater hidden underneath its bottom. When you turn on the kettle, the heater warms up the water until it boils. And the boiling water gives off steam that heats up a special metal plate at the top of the kettle. The heat causes the metal plate to bend and that turns off the switch. So you could say that an electric kettle feels when the water's boiling. Okay, now I understand. Hey, why do you need three bowls? You don't need to make any oatmeal for us. It's not for you guys. It's for my mom and dad. Start out here. No! Keep pouring into this one. And I say pour it here. And I say first you should pour it into mine. Oh, Nolik, where are you? I'll find him. Hang on, I'm going in. She was right over here. Uh, no, like... Over here. Simka! Here. No, like... There. Ow! Hey, where is your other boot? It got lost. Up there in the oatmeal. That must be your parents. Let's get out of here. Hey, and what about your shoe? Don't worry, I got another one. Hi, Tom Thomas, we're back. 
You must be hungry. We'll make you something to eat. But I already prepared us some food. And the water's already hot. Wash your hands. Tom Thomas, don't touch that kettle if it's hot. I don't want you to burn yourself. Yum, 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 so yum. today we're eating oatmeal for dinner. Delicious. Uh, maybe you have something else? Why something else? You're the ones that say that oatmeal's great for you and that it makes us stronger. Well, yeah, that's what we say. I'm glad that our son pays such careful attention. Mmm, <laughs> isn't it delicious? Really? Huh, what's that? Oh, look, you found the boot, Dad. What? <laughs> Uh, it's nothing. Just eat your food and don't get distracted. I'd like to see that oatmeal all gone, okay? And whoever doesn't finish won't get any candy. The alarm clock. Ha! It didn't ring again. Nolik, let's go fix the alarm clock. Simka, wake Tom Thomas up. School. Tom Thomas, get up already! Uh, uh. This is really something. And where's the battery in here? No, this is an old mechanical alarm clock. It doesn't work with a battery. It uses a spring. How's that work? People wind up the spring tightly. And then as it slowly unwinds, it turns the gears, which turn the hands of the clock. Uh, 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 Oh! What? The alarm clock broke! Uh, Let's hurry and get you washed up! Tom Thomas, are you just getting up? Dad, the alarm clock didn't go off, it's broken! Here's the problem, it won't turn, because the feather's stuck in the gears. Nolik, help me! It really is broken. Bad time to throw out this old piece of junk. Tom Thomas, I'm off to work. Don't be late for school. I won't. Where are we? In the trash can. And what's gonna happen to us? Well, you see, Nolik. <laughs> People throw out broken things without a second thought. Even appliances that can still be fixed end up in the trash all the time. And the trash is taken to a horrible, deadly place called the dump. If a fixie happens to be inside a broken appliance, he will come face to face with great danger. Once, my uncle got thrown into the dump buried inside an old TV. He barely managed to jump out of the bulldozer's path, and it was a miracle he didn't end up in the incinerator. After that, he just roamed around the huge dump, trying to fix anything. He became totally crazed. Whew. Good thing the Fixie Rescue Squad managed to find him and bring him back home. I don't want to scare you. But we might be taken to the dump, my boy. Papa, I'm scared. Huh. Where is the alarm clock? Maybe my dad took it to get fixed. <gasps> but Nolik and Papoose are in there. Now just a little bit further. I don't want to go to the dump. No tears. There's only one way out of here. We need to fix the clock and make it ring. But how? Inside the clock, there is the main spring, and there's also a second spring. The second spring is held still by a brake, and so it waits. When the little hand reaches the time the alarm was set to go off, the spring jumps off the brake, and the gears are free to start turning. That makes a little hammer beat the cup of a bell very, very quickly. And that's how an alarm clock rings. So this feather is stopping the gears and not letting the hammer strike the bell. Exactly. I'll start rocking the gear back and forth and you tug it. 
I think I can hear my alarm ringing. Run to the sound, quickly! Uh-huh, someone turned the alarm off. Whoa, and here comes that earthquake again. No lick, no lick. I'm here. No lick. We fixed the alarm clock. So what was wrong with it? A feather got jammed in the gears. And how could a feather get in a clock? Oh, it's probably from when I put the alarm clock under my pillow, so it wouldn't wake me up. Huh, so you mean because somebody doesn't like to get up in the morning, we almost ended up at the dump? By the way, if that somebody doesn't hurry off to his school soon, he'll be late. Oh, you're right, huh? The lie detector. Suka! Quiet. I'm on a stakeout here. Who are you staking out? Huh? Tom Thomas. We've got a bet that he won't be able to survive three days without any TV. Really? Can I be on the stakeout with you? Shh. Simka. Ha. Aha! I got you. What? Who? You lost the bet, Tom Thomas. Just tell me you didn't. I didn't. Why didn't you? It's because I... Mm, I'm not Tom Thomas. What? I'm Tom's brother. That's totally not true. We know Tom Thomas doesn't have a brother. I meant his first cousin. Then how come you two look so much alike? It's because our mothers are twins. So what should we call you? Who, me? Uh, John Johnson. And who are you, by the way? As if you don't know who we are. This room is beautiful. Sure is bigger than mine. I don't believe you. You're telling a lie. And what is your proof? Maybe he's not lying. There's a way to check it. How? Yeah, how? With a lie detector. You'll see. A lie detector is a device that is used to help figure out if someone is telling the truth or if they are lying. You see, when someone is lying, they always get a little bit nervous. Even though we might not see it, we know that a liar's heart beats a little faster, his breathing changes, and he sweats. A lie detector can pick up on all of these little things. And that's how a lie detector can be used to help find the truth. But you don't have a lie detector. But we know how a lie detector works, don't we? Or are you scared, Tom Thomas? What's that for? To listen to your pulse. How come? So I'll be able to check how fast your heart is beating. And Nolik? He's gonna keep an eye on how often you blink. And what are you doing with the egg? The egg is an old African method. If you're not telling the truth, your hand will automatically squeeze the egg. And so, the egg will crack. Well, my egg won't crack. We'll see about that. Humans have tried to come up with all sorts of ways to find out the truth. For instance, in ancient China, they would put some dry rice in a person's mouth when they told him the crime they believed he committed. Then, they checked the rice. If the rice stayed dry, they believed he had committed the crime. In ancient India, a person had to bang on a gong while answering a judge's questions. If he started banging the gong louder, then it was believed that he was trying to hide the truth. And in Europe, if one knight accused another of lying, then they would just take part in a duel. Whoever won that one was said to be on the side of truth. No, it's not easy to hide the truth, but sometimes it can be even harder to find it. Answer yes or no. You got that? Do you have two ears? Don't you have eyes? Just yes or no. Yes. 
answer. Are you a girl? Hey, come on. Yes or no? No. Where do you find such dumb questions? We just have to check what happens to your heart when you tell the truth to us. All right, now answer this. Do you know the Fixies? Yes or no? Yes. Uh, no. I forgot. His pulse is speeding up. Are you Tom Thomas? No. Ah, uh, his pulse is racing. And his eyes have started blinking. And the Fixies, tell us where you learned about him. From Tom Thomas. He couldn't have told you about us. It's a secret. He could. Not true. It's true. It's not true. Yes, it is. Hey, look! The egg cracked! Just give up, John Johnson. All right. I'm Tom Thomas, guys. Tish! Is it really possible to know if you lied just by measuring your pulse? With pulse, you really can. But you probably couldn't with the egg. You tricked me then. That wasn't nice. You weren't tricked. John Johnson was. Huh. You know what? I think you've got to get checked out on the slide detector. Ha! I don't think so. You need to get ready to give me my wish. Because you're the one that lost the bet. <laughs>